Good morning, and welcome to another edition of This Time Around. So, I had something else planned for this week, and it may still make it in this week. And I'm already, I'm out of breath because I've been running around doing cardio, and I'm going to go do some more after I do this. Oh, but I want to share what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about playfulness. I'm thinking about the magic of humor and the magic of play. Now, there is humor out there that's caustic, that's mean. I'm not talking about that kind of humor. I'm talking about the kind of humor that almost... I know, When I feel it, it's almost like it tickles my insides. And it makes me feel so good. And it, it's humor that sometimes I'm bringing and that other people are bringing. Oh, gosh. We had a... Well, <laughs> there was a health club that I used to belong to called Sport Rooms. And they had a slogan, and it was a little song. We put a little play in your day. And I thought, what a great slogan. What a great... They had a t-shirt. I never got it, but... What if you put a little play in your day? Maybe you already do. And I wonder if you've thought about what difference it makes to you and to others. And, you know, oh, I've got so many thoughts. <laughs> you know, people will go on about this thing or that thing that other people have done, or they'll feel bad about their own things that they've done. So... Let me ask you this. What happens with scraps, scraps of paper, scraps of food? Do you collect them? I hope not. And so why do we worry about them? Why do we sometimes go, oops, that was a mistake, or that wasn't finished, or that wasn't so good? And do we really worry about them? I hope not. And so why would we dig them up, like go through the trash and go, oh, well, there was this scrap from last Tuesday, and then there was this scrap or crap, this crap, this scrap from another day. Why would we lament on those? And why would we do that to other people? You may have heard me say that mistakes are really mistakes. They're mistakes. They're the great things that the photographers, the photographers are doing. Maybe not the great things, but they're the, the building blocks of what a photographer is doing before they get those great pictures. They do a lot of mistakes. Mm. We sometimes <laughs> call them outtakes, mistakes. Test kitchen kinds of, mm. Mm, that's not quite it yet. So do we... Do we put those out on bulletin boards and say, ooh, that person really had a terrible mistake? No. So I think we all, we all make them, we all do them. Hopefully, hopefully, I, I feel bad when I hear people say, oh, I don't, I don't get out there and test or make a footprint or let things happen because I don't want to make mistakes. Somebody was telling me that the other day and I they said I don't want to go the, through the frustration of having to learn something. I just want to do it and I don't want I I said you don't want to be seen blundering or groping or attempting. You don't want to be seen maybe struggling. Like, so it's okay, because I want to get away from this whole idea of perfect or imperfect. I think we're already perfect the way we are from source. But as human beings, I think it's not about being imperfect. I think we're just plain quirky, and quirky's okay. I can think of people who... I've gone through things with them and I think, oh my God, I've been so hurt 
or so disappointed, or I wish they hadn't done this, or I wish I hadn't, they hadn't done that, and I can make my own list. I wish I hadn't done this or that, or I wish I hadn't said this or that. But in another way, in another way, as I let things go, it, it all becomes an incredible mm, soup or casserole or something where there's all these mixed up flavors and textures and and little bits and pieces of things that we've all done or not done or said or not said. And so what's one of the things that makes a wonderful difference? Well, I keep thinking it's playfulness. It's la- it's letting ourselves play, letting ourselves be playful and allowing the playfulness of others to affect us. Oh my gosh, I think it's enormously healing, just incredibly healing. I've thought I can think of places where I've been I, I like a waiting room where I don't know anybody. Nobody knows anybody, but somehow there gets to be some little something. I don't know. It could be the way somebody walked out of the the door and was frustrated, or it could be the way the door made some kind of a noise, or it could be, I don't know, it could be the weather that we all have in common. And all of a sudden, somebody makes a joke. And everybody, it's like it ripples, and everybody's laughing And that joke, that whatever it is that happened, that ripple becomes a common something of everybody sharing. And it's so wonderful. It's so incredible. And it may be just that moment, or it may be that it's something that keeps happening while we're all waiting and it makes it ripple over and over again. Isn't that sweet? And these people don't even know each other, but I know I've had that happen. It's wonderful. Or standing in line. We're all waiting in line. And we're tired of waiting in line. But then there's something funny. Something funny that said or noticed. And we're all in it together. I think humor, I think playfulness is so unifying. And to be surprised by it is to allow. To just allow it to make a difference. How many times. I know I can look back and I'm, this is really weird, but I can look back and I can see so many times and places where I was so on guard that I wasn't as open to just allowing, to just enjoying. I've also looked back and noticed, and I mean, this is really some vulnerability for me, but I can, I can look back on many times where I was ambivalent about relationships. I was ambivalent, wanting, not wanting. Yes, no. I'm ready, no, I'm not. I'm relaxed, no, I'm not. I love this, no, I don't. I want it, no, I don't. I mean, I was so ambivalent. Can you relate to that? Is that you or can can you relate to, was that you? And is there a difference now? For me, there is. There is a difference. And wow, it is sweet. It is sweet to be able to allow, I would say, particularly through the magic of playfulness, through the magic of humor, through the magic of surprise. And just that that really takes letting others in and letting self out. Yes. It does, and it's it's a vulnerability, and yet it's it's a friendly one, isn't it? Better to have it be friendly, and I can I can tell you there are places where I've been, like doctors' offices or or hospitals, where I'm there to get something done, and I'm silly as all get out. Sometimes I get other people to join me in that silliness, and sometimes not. Sometimes they're very serious. And my humor almost is off-putting to them. But usually not. Oftentimes I would find, especially, I don't know, maybe there's something different about 
about the older I get or something. I don't know, but or just being able to attract. Many, many times I have it where other people are laughing as well. And then we're all more at ease and no one is as worried about anything. And there's more trust. I've been thinking that a lot of times people will talk about faith. And we're going to talk more about this because I'm going to have Jonathan Mosen on um, next week. And um, we're going to talk about some things that may surprise some of you. Um, but at any rate, um, I've been thinking about faith versus trust. And for me, faith is a noun. Faith is something people have. Trust can also be a noun, like I have trust. I have trust that this or that will happen. And maybe those faith, those words, faith and trust, can be used interchangeably. But for me, more of the time, trust is also a verb. Trust is something I do. It's something I, I do that puts me in that place to allow, and wow, to allow, particularly through the magic of playfulness. Oh my gosh, we got into such a funny thing around here this morning about, I forgot what it was about somebody talking about a body part that um, was removed or was being removed, and I said, there are three of us here, and I said, there will be a meeting of all the body parts that have ever been removed. And, oh, I've said this for a while, because I had a hip replacement last year, and um, and I, you know, I've said, I've joked about body parts being removed, and so <laughs> we got into this funny thing about body parts, and um and how important, somebody said, well, what is the most important body part to either not remove? You know, what is the most important body part of all? And and I started joking about, um, let's see, what did it start with? Um, it started with, um, I said, uh, well, let's see, it could be the appendix, but, you know, the appendix might be not wanting to be removed because there isn't enough of a table of contents. And it could be the thyroid because the thyroid is the electrical center and maybe that's really important. And this person was saying, nope, nope, it's not that. And um, I said, well, it could be the tonsils because, you know, they're involved. They're with the throat. Nope, nope, it's not those. Um I said, well, it could be the hip because I'm hip and no. And, um, and I said, well, it could be the wisdom teeth because, you know, I got to have wisdom. No, no, not that. And, um, I said, well, it could be the gallbladder because, you know, you got to be able to have gall. No, not that. And we just kept going and, and, you know, it was really funny. Like, you know, we, it could be the leg cause you, nope, nope, nope. Well, you gotta, you gotta be able to do leg work and you gotta have a foot. You gotta have a foot. And, you know, I gotta have a foot to put in my mouth. I'm so silly. <laughs> but, um, but we just kept going and, and well, finally he said the anus and, um, he said, because if you don't have that, you could really get bound up. And I said, you know what, even that stuff that we call that S-H word, um, you know, what do we have to have from some animals to grow crops? Even that is important. Even that is valuable. So um, it's just funny. Um, and and it's, it's true. Everything is good, ultimately, and everything is important. And if we stay in that place of playfulness and knowing that everything is really okay, even with those things that are called mistakes, even with those, even with those great takes and those scraps that really are nobody else's business. You don't have to let anybody go through your trash and walk around in your head with their dirty feet and look at all of your scraps or your mistakes. And if they've affected someone, you could say, oh, I'm sorry, I am, I apologize, that was a mistake, 
that was a mistake. It didn't belong where it was, or I wish uh, I'm apologizing that I said anything or did anything or didn't say or didn't do something that affected you in that way. And then let it go at that. I find myself these days listening a lot. Somebody asked me, what what books do I like? Well, you know, it's not so much books, but I love to listen to Esther Hicks. Oh, do I ever. I love to listen to Esther Hicks. Because what she's saying, and I had come to this, I had come to this increasingly, is that all things are already good with source. We are already good with source. We came here to do this human thing. And some things and some days and some weather is better than others. And sometimes there are just quirky things that happen. I can think of people where their quirkiness, just like, oh, I got my feelings hurt. It wasn't what I wanted or expected. And maybe I said and did things that I didn't want or expect. I still love those people. And I still love me even more because I can appreciate who each of us is and who we all are together. And one of the things that I keep focusing on is as we build more of the world that we are wanting, and I think we are working toward building a new world, one of the mottos that I have is one person's need is another person's passion. And there really are no burdens unless it's the burden of someone who won't show up and be a team player, of someone who won't show up and uh, trust that everything's okay, that they are supported, and that the magic of play can make a difference, and their play and our play together can make a difference. The one who won't show up and be a team player, that one might be a burden. But for the rest of us, One person's need is another person's passion. One person's need, maybe to help take care of animals, maybe to help pick up after them, maybe to help take care of children, maybe to help grow produce, maybe to help prepare food. One person's need is another person's passion who says, I adore taking care of animals. I adore picking up after them. I adore doing dishes. I adore uh, helping to take care of land, whatever it is. As long as we're all working together, as long as we're in and we're willing to just show up and love in spite of the quirkiness that we all have, we all have as human beings, we do quirkiness. You know, we're sort of like machinery. Some machines work better some days than others. You turn on certain machines and they, they make grinding noises. And we, you know, as people, we just do quirky things. And so what? And that quirkiness, my quirkiness helps me love you. My quirkiness helps me remember when I when I brush up against your quirkiness, I remember my own. And when I find it in you, I remember my own. And as I just kind of, oh, okay, there it is again. Yep. Yeah, there are those little quirky aspects of who we are as people. And let some of that go Maybe let it tickle my insides along with some of the other playfulness that comes about and then keep on just breathing and relaxing into that and trusting and knowing that it's all good and that we are good. We are each good. We are made of this incredible source energy. Some of you may have heard this story (laughs) that I came up with uh, and I know another minister that came up with something very similar, which is funny. It must have been meant to come through the collective. But I started saying, you know, for me, this thing that we've called God, for me, more and more, it's not a a deity. It's not a person. It's not this bearded man sitting up on a throne or this 
goddess in her gowns and robes and you know it's not one or the other and I used to say father mother god it's both okay and then I began and I heard somebody say that it's personal and it's impersonal yeah but I started thinking of it as an energy it it as an energy it as an essence what about this essence that runs through everyone, each of us, and everything? What about this essence that makes the sun rise? What about this essence that brings beauty? What about this essence that put the wag in the dog or the cat's tail? That put the, the purr or the meow or the woof in those animals? And that brought cuteness isn't cuteness a wonderful thing? How about when you notice that someone's cute? Or if you notice yourself being cute, what a cool, fun thing that is. And who made playfulness? Where did that come from? So I get excited about all this. And I found myself saying, you know what? This is all in it. And I get so excited that I could say, I am full of it. I am full of it. And you're probably listening and some of you are probably thinking, yep, you sure are. Yes, indeed. But what is it? It. It is that essence. And so then I said, I have to come up with an acronym. So it, I decided, is inspirational thinking, idea thoughts, intuitive truth, and my favorite, intentional trust. Oh, yes. Full of it, full of it, full of it. And then I heard this other minister do a talk about this, not quite in the same way, but similar. And another minister in the same place said, I love the itness. Yes, I love the itness. Itness. Wonderful itness could be witness. <laughs> anyway, so much for all of that. I hope you have play, play, play in your day. I hope you laugh. I hope you play. I hope you share your playfulness with others. I hope you let it ripple throughout wherever you are. Not caustic play, not mean play, but the kind of play that is safe and it adds to healing. It adds to healing. It adds to ways that we can feel good and we can know that in spite of all kinds of crazy things about the way the world is, that we are really okay. And in spite of things that we might have called mistakes, that they really are mistakes. And sometimes we miss the mark. Okay. Sometimes we're off the mark. Sometimes we're quirky. Sometimes other people are quirky. Oh yeah, that's part of the human journey. I don't think we're in this school. I don't think we're here just to learn. I think we brought our goodness, our itness here to make a difference. And as we make those things we call mistakes, then we get to remember, we get to reconnect with who we are, and we get to bring that wisdom and empathy to others. And we get to allow it to mm, maybe tickle our insides, maybe blanket us in comfort and something soothing and know that, yeah, life is good. And it's all good and we're okay. So please, if you feel like it, add that play to your day. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here on this time around. Because any moment is a new time of this time around. So it's a new day. It's a new time in this time around. Mm. Thanks for being here. Back soon. Much love. Bye just for now.